Spring today, we celebrate a new beginning and join again in a time-honored Westminster College tradition. Out of respect for this tradition, we ask that all cell phones and electronic devices be turned off now. I declare the 2015 President's Convocation open. Please remain standing for the invocation. Will you pray with me, please? God of all hope and truth, we stand on the edge of so much that is new, a new year, a new opportunity for knowledge and growth, for some of us a new community, a new home. We are poised at the beginning of this journey and we seek your spirit. We seek your spirit and your presence because in a world where there is much suffering, we yearn for your compassion. In a world where there is much fear, we seek your courage. In a world of false promises and easy answers, we strive for critical thinking, for discovery and new insight. Grant, O oh God, that we gathered in this place, dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge, may find and cultivate these gifts compassion, courage, and intellectual rigor in our common life together as a community. We pray these things together in the name of all that is sacred, all that is holy. Amen. Please be seated. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Stephanie Kraut, Vice President and Dean of Student Life here at Westminster, and I have the privilege of being the first among many who will warmly welcome you to Westminster College. As you start this new chapter in your lives, my wish is that we both challenge and support each other. You are here because we believe you have what it takes to succeed, and we want you to be a positive, contributing member of our campus community. We're committed to preparing you to take on whatever life has in store. I want, you to be, I, don't want to be, I want to begin by challenging you to push the boundaries of your comfort zone. Get involved in something new. Make friends with someone different than you've ever be befriended before. Live the Westminster adventure. But at the same time, find the proper balance in your new life. Practice some healthy habits. Set some small goals at first. Budget your time well so that you can succeed in your academic life and still enjoy some of the other opportunities Westminster has to offer. This educational journey you're about to take will be one of the most transformational experiences of your life, both academically and personally. Enjoy it and make the most of it. At this time, I would like to introduce you to others on the platform. Many of them will play key roles in making Westminster a life-changing experience for you. On my far right is Reverend Jamie Haskins, chaplain of the college. To the other side of Jamie is Dr. Bill Sheehan, our vice president of Stu institutional advancement. Sitting to the left of Bill is Jenny Bondurant, our interim vice president for enrollment management. On the other side of Jenny is Dr. Carolyn Perry, Senior Vice President and Dean of the Faculty. Moving to the other side of the podium, on my left is Dr. Benjamin Akande, President of the College. Just like you, Dr. Akande is new to Westminster, but if you've had the opportunity to meet him this weekend already, then you have a taste of the energy and enthusiasm he's bringing to Westminster. Next to President Akande is our special guest, Dr. Dan Jackson, Class of 2004, who is our convocation speaker today. And finally, to the left, uh, to the, his left, is the current student body president and one of our top campus leaders, Molly Dwyer, class of 2016. At this time, I would like to call on Jenny Bondurant to present the new class. On behalf of Westminster College, I have the privilege and honor of presenting the 164th entering class of the Westminster community. This new class of 306 young men and women exemplifies the intelligence, integrity, and diversity of those who have come before them. 
The newest members of the Westminster community truly embody the Westminster mission, and they will be the world changers of the next generation. This group represents 20 states and 32 countries and have chosen to join the community of scholars that make Westminster College one of America's most respected undergraduate colleges. We are also proud that 34 of our new students have a legacy connection to Westminster, a grandparent, parent, or sibling who attended here previously. And two of our new students who chose to come here are the sons and daughters of Westminster faculty and staff. At this time, I would like the class of 2019 to stand. <laughs> President Akande and the Greater Westminster Community, I am proud to present the 164th class of Westminster College. You may be seated. Members of the class of 2019, you are not the only new face on campus this year. We have a new president at Westminster College who is just as excited and probably just as nervous to be here as you are. Our 21st president, Dr. Benjamin Akande, was born in Nigeria and came to the United States at the age of 17. All his life, he had heard from his family about the opportunities in America for education. And he took those, those thoughts, built his dreams, and they have certainly come true for him. Before coming to uh, Westminster, President Conde spent 15 years as the dean of the George Herbert Walker School of Business at Webster University in St. Louis. He is deeply committed to the Westminster standards of academic excellence and the liberal arts, and he will make Westminster even more successful both nationally and internationally. It is my privilege to present to you Dr. Benjamin Conde, President, Westminster College. Thank you, Bill. And thank you, Jenny, uh, your enrollment management team and all the Westminster community who played a role in bringing us such an extraordinary group of young men and young women. We thank you. Good afternoon. Students, parents, faculty, staff, alumni, trustees, other guests, and most importantly, the new student. It is my honor and privilege to welcome you to Westminster as the oldest freshman in this institution. The only difference is I'm the only one that can get married and I'm the only one that can have kids. <laughs> you have to wait. <laughs> As you begin the next phase of your life, in the lingo of Facebook, you have a new status. So it's time to update your wall. And what will it say on your wall tonight? What will your connections update broadcast to your network? Perhaps you'll post some pictures, upload images, and tag your smiling classmates to memorialize today's festivities. But when it comes to status, will you use this occasion to merely add your new credentials to your account profile? Will, you, will your status read freshman or new student? You begin today that will forever change that status? Will it say, off to explore, starting my journey, continuing to challenge myself? Will it be bold? Will it help define you? Certainly, changing your status will not change yourself. That is what I want Westminster to do for you, to change your status. I want it to be a life-changing experience. I hope you will learn while here at Westminster that learning is not a destination, but a lifelong journey. And while learning may change your status, it is not a status, it is a state of being. So I would challenge you to be a critically aware, lifelong learner, to become a leader of character, committed 
to the values of integrity, fairness, respect, and responsibility. Kofi Annan, former Secretary General of the United Nations, articulated so clearly why you must accept this challenge. He said it better. He said, knowledge is power. Information is liberating. Education is the premise of progress. In every society and in every family, that is why I challenge you today to be a lifelong learner. I have a second challenge for you. For all you Twitter users out there who would tweet out today's event, from this day forward, I ask that you measure your success not by how many people follow you on Twitter, but, uh, but by how many follow you in leading change. Your impact will be measured by the quality of your followers and by the quality of your leadership. I want to further challenge you not to limit your life's narrative to 140 characters. With all due respect to my good friend and founder of Twitter, St. Louis native Jack Dorsey, 140 characters may be adequate for many messages, but no one should strive for such a short epitaph, resume, or testimonial. You are a generation raised in the culture of fast, short, immediate communication. So skip the LMAO, TTYL, IDK, and OMG. Instead, I ask you, to strive to accumulate a vast, exhaustive collection of polysyllabic accolades and adjectives to describe your life. And let me suggest, let me suggest a few adjectives for you to embrace. Reliable, engaged, persistent, honorable, creative, inquisitive, accomplished, com committed. These are accolades such as mom, dad, entrepreneur, innovator, giver, philanthropist, leader, educator, questioner. I implore you, I implore you to let your stardust to be always seeking and may your life be filled with many moments where you can just LOL. You know, great people have great thoughts. And before you, we have the newest members of the Blue Jay Nation. I'm just gonna call you guys baby Blue Jays for a while. <laughs> and as you begin your journey, I wanna share with you a few thoughts that I believe you will find valuable over the next four years. Here they are. Remember, the difference between success and failure is really a matter of time. Your destiny is very important. So please don't leave it in the hands of others. Don't be preoccupied with doing things right. Pay more attention to doing the right thing. Learn how to manage your time because it is the only thing that you can control. Learn from the mistakes of others because you can't live long enough to make them all yourself. And remember, Remember to be grateful. New students, I want to challenge you to saddle your dreams before you ride them. And understand that maturity has more to do with what type of experiences you've had and what you've learned from those experiences and less to do with how many birthdays you have celebrated. And lastly, and please don't forget this, you were all born originals. There is nothing out there that is you. You are specimens that are unique. And yet, so many live their lives trying to be copies. I urge you, I ask you, I beg you, stay original. Most of all, remember that the future belongs to those who excel at doing few things well those who are determined to surpass their expectations and develop the capacity to consistently deliver on their promises. And if you do that, you will remember that tomorrow will be owned by those who choose to be flexible and are unfazed by challenges. 
So my fellow new Blue Jays, as you look ahead to the next four or five years, may you be bold enough to clear your own pathway. May you muster your courage to find your calling and remember that the future belong to only those that can see it. I say to you today, congratulations. Welcome to Westminster College. We're glad you're here. Enjoy your journey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Akande. Today's convocation speaker, Dr. Dan Jackson, graduated from Westminster in 2004. Dr. Jackson is an assistant professor of obstetrics and gynecology for the Division of Maternal Fetal Medicine at the University of Missouri Women's and Children's Hospital. Dr. Jackson chose a career in academic medicine because of his love of teaching, a love that was nurtured by the dedicated and the enthusiastic professors of Westminster College. While at Westminster, he was a member of the prestigious Skulls of Seven, both the Alpha Chi Honorary Society and the Omicron Delta Kappa Honorary Society, and the Beta 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 Biological Honorary Society. He served terms as both president and vice president of Beta Beta Beta. He was a member of the Delta Tau Delta Social Fraternity, where he served as academic chair assistant treasurer and treasurer. It was at Westminster that Dan met his lovely wife, Kristen, who graduated in 2006. And we are so excited to welcoming their son and their future child to be baby Blue Jays someday. Dan's father, Mike Jackson, and brother David Jackson, and David's fiance, Claire Batterot, are also graduates of Westminster. This past spring, Dan was awarded the Young Alumni Achievement Award at Westminster's Alumni Weekend. I know I speak for many faculty and staff in saying that Dan was and continues to be an all-time favorite at Westminster. Brilliant, hardworking, and just a lot of fun. And so now it is my privilege to present our convocation speaker, Dr. Dan Jackson. Thank you. Dean Perry, members of the faculty, staff, board of trustees, President Conde, and most of all, the Westminster College class of 2019, thank you for having me here today. That's the nicest thing anybody's said about me since my wedding day. <laughs> Reverend Hoskins asked me to provide an interpretive dance for you guys. I'm sorry, that's not happening. As you sit here today taking the first steps through what will likely be four of the most formative years and exciting years of your lives. The friends I made at Westminster are the ones who stood with me at my wedding. They're the ones I call at the end of a day to celebrate a success or late at night to discuss a setback. Many of you may be sitting in the same room right now as the best friends you'll have for the rest of your life with your future husbands, with your future wives, and you haven't even met them yet. That's an exciting prospect and a little bit scary too. Most significantly, I met my amazing, wonderful, and beautiful wife, Kristen, here during my junior year. Without her, I would not be a husband, and I would not be a father, and being those two things are the best part of my day. By this point, you've probably been inundated with sage advice, such as to grab the bull by the horns, or the world is your oyster. To an extent, I agree with the sentiments expressed therein. However, I would submit to you that cracking open an oyster, for those of you who haven't tried it, is actually quite challenging, and that accosting a 2,000-pound animal equipped with a pair of three-foot head spikes is likely to have profound and unanticipated negative consequences. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try. In fact, trying is the only way to grow. Success is stumbling from failure to failure without any loss of enthusiasm. My time at Westminster through a certain lens could be viewed as a string of failures. I failed for two long years to get even a single date. <laughs> I struggled as a pledge educator during my sophomore year. I wasn't a strong enough leader to be successful in that sort of environment. 
I failed to keep a 4.0 grade point average for even two semesters after doing so through four years of high school. The first B of my life was given by Dr. Rebecca Shapiro in Introduction to Literary Analysis. The next semester, I got my second B in Human Anatomy. I'll let that sink in. <laughs> Taught by Dr. Doug Fickus. The crazy thing about that second one with Dr. Fickus is that I earned an A, I had a 92%, but he gave me a B because I said I, he said I could have done better. Ask anybody else who had him in class, that's a true story. <laughs> my senior year, days before I was accepted into medical school, my lab partner and I broke Dr. Jeff Main's incredibly expensive uh, centrifuge. I'm lucky that we weren't injured or worse in that event. Eventually, however, I did get the right girl to go on a date with me to the post office for beer and hot wings. <laughs> I developed leadership skills that I use every day in courting the care of critically ill pregnant patients. And Dr. Fickus was right. I was lazy that semester. I didn't earn an A. But the next semester, I got the only A that he gave in his comparative physiology class, and I used the exams from that class as study guides for the first two years of medical school. I guess my point is that if you sit in your dorm, do nothing but study, and take no risks, you'll insulate yourself not only from failure and hardship, but most importantly, from success and personal growth. I left Westminster a better and stronger person than when I started here, and you will as well, as long as you're not afraid to take those chances. So my advice is to immerse yourself in what the campus has to offer. Be active in student government. Join a club, join a club, join the Greek system. This is not John Belushi's Delta Chi house down the row. Every fraternity and sorority here has the tools to make tremendous positive contributions, both to the campus, the community, and to its members as they grow into tomorrow's leaders. It was that environment in my fraternity that helped me to grow more than any other, to learn from my failures and capitalize on my successes. And that's not specific to my house. My father and brother were in a different fraternity and would tell you the same thing word for word as would any number of alumni here today. The stage behind me and the audience before me is full of individuals who have been more successful than I can ever hope to be. When you struggle, and you will, seek out the advice of your friends, faculty, fraternity and sorority brothers and sisters. They can help no matter how bleak the situation seems, I promise. Finally, I'd like to leave you with a, shoe, a few short pieces of advice. Number one, don't take your cell phone to class. Campus is two blocks by three blocks. If somebody needs to find you, they will find you. I promise, focus on class, that's why you're here. This is a small campus. At some point, you will do something that is embarrassing. It will be difficult to go to class the next day. <laughs> but don't worry, in a couple of days, somebody else will do something else and you'll be old news. <laughs> That's just how it is. Embrace it. Third, whatever your reputation was in high school, it's now gone. For better or for worse, your reputation is a clean slate and you will be judged by how you conduct yourself from today forward. Again, this is a small campus and what you do will be reflected in the faces of every student, staff, and faculty member here. So carry yourself accordingly. Finally, have fun and don't be afraid to be the individual that you came here to be. Thank you. Thank you for those very inspiring words, Dr. Jackson. And thank you for setting a great example of what it means to be a member of the Westminster community and for speaking with us today. And to the newest members of the Westminster community who just walked through the columns, congratulations on making a life-changing decision. Maybe in this moment right now, you don't realize the significance of today. And three years ago, when I was sitting in those chairs, neither did I. My name is Molly Dwyer. I am from St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm a proud member of the Cardinal Nation. And I'm the, yeah, you can clap for that. <laughs> I'm the current um, president of the Student Government Association, and I'm really excited for all of you because, like I said, today is a really big and memorable day. I remember my move-in day like it was yesterday. 
I was paired with a random roommate who's now sitting up there and has been my roommate for the past, this is our fourth year, somehow she still puts up with me. And um, I didn't really know anybody coming to Westminster. I was a first generation college student. I didn't really know what was going on and I was really nervous about it. I was terrified at the thought of doing my own laundry, missing my mom's cooking, and gaining the freshman 15. So just so you know, whatever you're feeling right now, it's probably very normal, and every other person in this room is probably feeling the same way. You're all in the same boat. I was asked to give a welcome and maybe a few words of wisdom for this ne next big journey in your life that we call college. So I thought to myself, what can I tell these young men and women, and what should they expect, and what advice can I give them? The first thing I'll tell you is that your Westminster experience is whatever you make of it. If you open yourself up to the opportunities that lay before you, these strangers you're now sitting by will quickly become your family and your best friends. There is an abundance of opportunity at this college and within this community. Seek them. For some of you in this room, this might be your first time living in Missouri. For another number of you, this is probably your first time living in the United States. Embrace the people that now live around you, your roommates and people in class that you're sitting right next to and at the dining hall. This global community that you are now a part of has brought together people from all over the world, from different walks of life, and that's a beautiful thing and should never be taken for granted. And if you think about it, out of any other college in the world, you're sitting here today. Make it your mission within these next four years to figure out that reason. Thousands of people who have sat before you have gone on to do incredible things and have formed relationships that will last them for the rest of their lives. And secondly, I want to give you seven little tips that I've tried to put into practice at Westminster and that I think everybody should. Number one, get some sleep. I know that sounds very typical, but I'm 21, I need a lot of sleep, but that doesn't mean you have to stick to a very strict schedule because I'm a firm believer in the fourth meal at Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the freshman 15 will get you. All right, number two, while you're walking to class, keep your head up and be proud. Say hi to people. Don't awkwardly look down at your phone and try to ha miss out on these conversations because those are the most meaningful. Uh, my good friend Ferris Bueller once said, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. Number three, sit by somebody new in the dining hall. Or if you notice somebody sitting by themselves, be the person to invite them to sit with you, introduce them to your friends. A small gesture like that can make somebody stay. Go to class. <laughs> Seriously, like, like you said, it's a very small school. People will notice if you're not there. At Westminster, your professors will know your name, and those relationships are incredibly special, and they don't happen at every school, so take advantage of that. Number five, do your laundry. And that's that. Just do it. <laughs> can get back. It'll fix everybody around you, so just make sure you're on top of that one. <laughs> Number six. Don't be afraid to try something new. Whether that be studying abroad, playing a sport, joining Greek life, trying new food, challenge yourself to do something you never thought you would do before. Number seven, realize that there are people around you who want to help you. We, your peers, are very happy to have you here on campus and welcome you as our new classmates. Don't be afraid to ask for help. We've all been where you are. And I guarantee you'll have trouble opening your campus mailbox for the first couple months, so please reach out to an upperclassman on that one. Um, I hope this was all somewhat helpful information, and I hope that your journey at Westminster will be transformative and, of course, fun. Try to live out the college's virtues of integrity, respect, fairness, and responsibility. Throughout your time here, I hope you strive to give your best efforts to this college, because I promise, if you let it, this college will give you an experience that is priceless. Welcome to Westminster. And now it is time for you to learn a Westminster tradition that accompanies every official ceremony on campus, the singing of the alma mater, which is printed on the back of today's program. Grant Gershner, class of 2016, accompanied by Dr. Natasha Sexton, will first teach you the alma mater, and then we invite you to stand and sing with him. Thine we 
rise and sing along. And now, brothers and sisters of the Westminster community, receive this benediction. Go out into this day, this year, this world in peace, to love and to serve a creation in desperate need of your care. May you have the courage required to be a mind reaching to the boundaries, a hand stretching out, a voice speaking up. May you hold fast to what is true, what is good. May you strengthen the faint-hearted. May you always strive to support the weak and help the suffering. And may each of you find the grace within you to honor all people, to celebrate the vibrant and pulsing diversity of those gathered here. May you remember the places from which you came, strive for beauty and knowledge, and leave this community a better place because you were a part of it. Go forth now, wrapped in God's grace and God's peace. Amen. Please remain in your seats until the platform party and all student and faculty have exited the auditorium. Platform party will proceed first, followed by the faculty, and then our students. Family members and friends may then exit and rejoin students in front of CHAMP Auditorium. I would like to remind all parents, other family members, and friends that we are holding a reception with light refreshments outside on Latshaw Plaza from 4.30 to 5.30. This provides you with an opportunity for a final goodbye before leaving campus so the members of this class can begin their educational journey. I now declare this convocation closed. <laughs>